Hey everyone and welcome to another Genshin guide and today we're gonna look at something uh, more math related and it's about damage calculations and so um, over here I've got a damage formula uh, it's kind of reduced a little bit um, it doesn't show uh, all the components of damage but it shows the ones that um, we want to look at and so here um, the point of today's video is we want to see how how valuable are certain subsets? Um, you know, how do we quantify that value? Um, what are the relationships between these subsets and their values? And also, you know, how do we determine what's currently at the moment, what's the most valuable subset, subs, substat for me? Um, and so this damage formula is taken from a Reddit post, uh, which I will link below. Uh, it's slightly condensed. I've removed a few parts, moving components to it, like the skill multiplier and the, the defense drop components, just so that we can really focus on, you know, just the the damage substats of uh, artifacts that you, you know, that you really want to optimize. So um, there, there are a lot of posts on this on Reddit, but today I just want to uh, show you uh, a way to think about it that's a little more theoretical and uh, related to math and just the math behind the damage calculation. So here we go. So if we first, first of all, if you look at uh, our damage, it looks like there's a lot going on here. There's damage equals the base attack um, multiplied by the one plus attack percentage plus the attack. And this whole thing, it gets multiplied by a damage increase modifier it gets multiplied by a resistance reduction, and this is your enemy's resistance. And then um, to calculate DPS, you know, we have a component that, you know, talks about the crit rate and the crit damage. So that's this part. And to just make the math a little easier, we're going to call this part D1, which is going to be uh, all the components related to attack. We're going to call this component D2, um, which is any, you know, damage increases, whether it's your skill or because of your weapon, any damage bonuses go into here. And on the, the third D3, we're going to call that the resistance modifier, which is going to be your enemy's resistance. So this could be elemental or physical, it doesn't matter, right? So we're just going to put the resistance term, uh, we're going to call it D3. And then we're going to call the crit damage term D4. So anything related to critical damage, the rate as well as the critical damage. And so um, we're, not, uh, we're really going to focus on the four main components. Uh, so maybe a little more than four. So we're going to look at attack percentage, raw attack, damage percentage, resistance percentage, crit percentage, and crit damage percentage. So we're going to look at each of these parts and see, you know, how do they form, like how do they, you know, contribute to this overall damage. So it doesn't matter what you start at, okay? Uh, um, what I'm going to calculate here are going to be applicable at all levels. Um, but you'll see what I mean uh, once I get into it. So how do we think about value in terms of how much value does, let's say, attack percentage give me? So that's it's kind of like this, right? Let's say I if I increase my attack percentage by a little bit, how much does my damage increase? And that's really what, you know, how much value am I getting out of that one percentage and attack percent? And how, how do we quantify that? Well, there's this thing that we can use, it's called partial derivatives. And if you've never heard of, if you've heard of it before somewhere, you probably learned it somewhere in college. If not, it's just kind of just like a regular derivative. It's just taking a derivative of this function and we'll call this function the damage function which is you know this whole formula and you know we're going to increase attack percentage a little bit but keep everything else the same and we're going to see how does that change my damage so that's kind of the idea of what a partial derivative is so let's go ahead and um take the partial derivative of uh this function so i'm going to take the partial damage uh with the attack percent Okay, and with partial derivatives, we're going to hold everything else constant, right? And so uh, if you're looking, let's say, so all, all of this uh, becomes constant. And, and what we're going to see here is that 
it's gonna be really easy since I've called these d2, d3, d4 because they these all stay the same, right? And so if you think about it, if I increase attack by a one percent, that's gonna increase all of these by that same one percent. Okay, so very very easily if we, if, if we take the partial derivative, if we can very quickly go ahead and um, you know apply these terms here because we know for every point of increase in that attack percentage we're going to increase by you know the product of d2 d3 and d4 so at the same time so here we have that but how 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 does the partial derivative you know change with regard to d1 okay so let's let's take a look at it um, if we increase 0.1% in attack percentage, does it increase the flat attack? Well, no, because it's, you know, it's kind of on its own. It's like a plus attack on its own here. So it's nothing to do with the plus attack. So the plus attack doesn't factor into this. What about the one? Does the one change? Again, the one doesn't change because, you know, that's not, it's not multiplied by attack percentage or anything. So what, what's the only thing that's, a, that's multiplied by it? And that's the base attack, right? And so very quickly, we can see this partial derivative is um, the base attack times d2, d3, d4. And that's it. That's our damage attack percentage formula. There's a little nuance here in that usually partial derivatives, we think about it as per unit. So like if you plus one, but obviously as a percentage, you don't plus one, you kind of plus 0 0.01. And so we're just going to scale this by a factor of 0 0.1 or 0 0.01. Sorry, 0 0.01, uh, or like dividing by 100 because we're only increasing it by just a tiny little bit, right? And so that's our first formula, and that's our uh, um, our first partial formula, and you know and it shows us how much attack percentage increases the damage. So let's look at the next term. Um, let's look at attack, right? So same thing. So the d2, d3, d4 stays the same, okay? We no longer have to put the 0 0.01 term in there because, you know, raw attack is just an attack value, right? So that's all good. Do we put base attack in there? So if we look at base attack, is it related to attack? And we can see that no. Increasing your attack doesn't modify, you know, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't get multiplied by base attack. So actually all of this is, we don't even use it. So if we take a look at the formula, the attack increase only affects everything else to the right. It doesn't affect anything here. So we can just leave it out. And so the partial for the attack is actually much simpler. It's just d2 plus d2 plus d4. And immediately you can see the difference between these two uh, values, right? The attack percentage increase you know, depends on your base attack, whereas a raw attack does not. Um, but both of them are affected by the other terms, like the d2, d3, and d4. So, so that's it for the attack. And why don't we go to the next part, right? Um, partial, the damage of the partial damage percent. And this one is much simpler because this term is kind of just on its own. Uh, one, you know, it doesn't relate to damage in any way, so we can just ignore d2 completely and. Um, this is just going to be d1 multiplied by d3 multiplied by d4. And again, because this is a percentage value, let's scale that down by 100, by 0 0.01. So that's our partial for the damage percent. Okay, so that's simple enough. Um, what about our partial for um, uh, resistance? Okay. And so resistance is a, li a little bit different because it's it's a negative. <clears throat> but in any case, if we reduce resistance by 0 0.01, that's going to be an increase in damage. So we don't really have to care about the signs here. We know this is going to be a positive value. And so the same thing, um, it's going to be D1 because resistant 1 isn't affected by resistance, this constant 1. Um, we're just going to apply the constant as D1. Uh, D2 and D3, so D1, D2, and D4, sorry, that's what I meant to say. Um, so D1, D2, and D4. And again, we apply the 0 0.01, so that's uh, because it's a percentage. So there we have it, the partial of resistance is D1, D2, and D4. And then 
we, we just put the 0 0.01 thing there. And now we come to the really interesting part, right? How does crit percent and crit damage affect these partial calculations? Well, let's take a look. Um, partial damage to crit crit percent, which is you know crit rate. Um, so again, we're going to use D1, D2, and D3 right off the bat because we know any increase in that term is going to you know affect these these three terms are just any ink will affect like these three because they're multiplied all right what else is multiplied with crit percent one is not that's a constant oh but it's multiplied by crit damage right so we can take crit damage and in a similar way as how we applied base attack here um this thing is gonna be yeah it's gonna be affected by the crit damage and you know, just think about it logically, right? Yeah, your crit percent, the increase in your crit percent is gonna depend on your crit damage because your crit percent makes a crit, right? And and your crit deals crit damage. So yeah, so that makes sense. It takes d1, d2, d3 multiplied by your crit damage. That's how much a uh, an increase in your crit rate would should do. And again, we wanna apply that 0 0.01 because this is a percentage increase in the crit rate. So there we go. And if you've been paying attention, um, the crit damage is basically the same thing as the crit rate, except one small little detail that instead of depending on the crit damage, it depends on the crit rate, right? And so immediately you can see these are all of our partial formulas, and these are going to tell us, you know, exactly how much value we're going to get from each substat. Okay, so let's take a look at the relationships between them. Um, in, in a world where we don't have any crit damage, my crit rate, it's not going to do any increase at all. So if we had zero crit damage, we would get no increase from crit rate. And the same for crit damage. So it looks like crit damage and crit rate kind of go hand in hand here. Um, and that's very important to know because if you if your, your character doesn't, like, doesn't have any crit rate or doesn't have any crit damage, there's no point specking into crit rate or crit damage but generally you, you do have some kind of crit rate and crit damage into uh in your character so you know it comes to a point where the question becomes should i spec into attack or should i spec into crit damage and crit percent and this this question becomes easy once you you know start putting in numbers in there um because you could easily plug in plug in numbers into each of these four in each of these partials and the highest partial is going to tell you which of these um you know substats are going to give you you know the best amount but before that i want to talk about a little bit about crit rate and crit damage as you can see crit rate depends on crit damage and crit damage depends on crit rate vice versa so they're kind of like uh they're getting multiplied by each other right in this formula here and the interesting thing about um, how when you multiply two things together and you're trying to optimize them is that um, if you have one that's really high and one that's really low so um, increasing the lower one is going to give you more of an increase than increasing the higher one so for example if I have a 20% crit rate right and a 100% crit damage okay, and, and, I, and I multiply these two for example uh, let me just find that yeah so what what am i gonna get 20 percent of 100 percent that's you know 20 percent and now if i increase 100 percent by 10 percent okay what does that what does that happen so 0.2 times 1.1 right and that's going to give me 22 percent but what happens if instead of increasing the 100 percent i increase the 20 percent to 30 percent instead what happens? Suddenly, I get a 30% total, you know, damage kind of proportional. So as you can see, increasing the lower one is always better than increasing the higher one. And if you think about it, if you keep increasing the lower one, what will happen? Eventually, they will remain the same, right? And then from then on, you're going to start increasing one over the other. And then wait a minute, this one becomes lower. And then you're going to increase that. 
And so the optimal way to increase your crit rate and crit damage is to actually have them equal each other, if you think about it that way. So, I mean, that's pretty hard to do in-game practically, but that's, that's the idea to it. So if I were to take, you know, 120%, and if I could somehow lower it, my maximum would be 60% crit rate at a 60% uh, crit damage. Okay, so I lower the damage, but I increase the rate. And what do I get? So that's just 0 0.6 squared. And I get 36%. So out of that 120%, 120 points of percentage, I can get the most value by keeping them the same. So, so this is how I can maximize that at 36%. So that's the relationship between crit rate and crit damage. You kind of want them to be pretty much e like on the same. And the same thing kind of applies to each of the components, like D1, D2, D3, and D4. So what does that mean? So if I increase D1, if I, I spec all into attack percentage or flat attack or base attack or whatever, right? That's only going to increase uh, based on how high these other components are. You catch my drift? So I'm going to say it again. If you increase uh, your flat attack or anything to do with attack, anything to do with D1 really, that's only going to increase by the product of the other components that you already have, your D2, D3, and D4. That's your damage percentage, your resistance, or resistance reduction, I guess, and your crit rate, crit damage total, your crit damage component. And the same thing for vice versa. So if you increase your crit damage, that's only going to increase your attack. Uh, you're just only gonna that's that's gonna increase based on your D1, D2, and D3, which is all the other components other than crit rate. So the same analogy, right? If you have one that's higher and one that's lower, you always want to increase the lower one, right? Except that in this case, you know, attack and attack is you know it's a raw value and crit is a percentage so it's a little different you can't say like 50 attack raw value equals to 50 percent crit it's a little different there so you really have to crunch the numbers to see but in general the idea is that you want to keep you don't want to have one that's way too high above the other they kind of want to be in some sort of equilibrium so that you're maximizing what you get from the other components of the formula if that's making sense so again, if, if one of your D components is really low, you, um, to get the most value out of that artifact or that new item, you're going to want to increase that component, the lowest component specifically, and that's going to give you the highest increase. Um, and that's how you can decide um, you know, which, which of these subsets are going to be the most valuable. And so uh, I have an example here, and this is an uh, example from my own uh, from my own, if you look at the bottom right of the screen. Um, so I have Xiangling at 692 base attack, for example, and her attack bonuses are 777. So she's got a pretty high attack around in like the 14 to 1500 range. Okay, I have a Gladiator set on her, um, as well as the um, uh, Crescent Pike, I think, damage. Uh, the Gladiator set, as well as the Crescent Pike gives physical damage percent, so that's going to be a total of 66.5, and I've put it here. I, I, I'm going to ignore skill multiplier and defense drop, that's fine. Uh, I've just checked her stats, her crit rate is 19.6, and her crit damage right now is 78.8%. So without looking at the numbers to the right, which is where I calculate all the damage numbers, right? Where do you think, um, where do you think my damage is lacking? If you're just looking at these terms, right? So my attack is pretty high, and I have a pretty high damage percent multiplier, right? It's something. My crit damage is also not bad. It's you know coming to eighty percent. Uh, the resistance is at uh, enemy resistance is ten percent. I have no enemy resistance, you know, factor in here. Um, um, but if we just ignore resistance for now and we look, which is kind of like my lowest stat, crit rate, right? Crit rate kind of looks like it's my weakest stat. It's only at twenty percent, and it's not really doing much right now but it could do a lot because the rest of my stats are pretty high and so i've actually uh, set up a excel sheet where i calculate each of the partials that i've just mentioned and here are my here, here are the partials for that 
So if you look at it, the partial for crit rate is really high. It's 8.6. So that means that every 0.01% increase in my crit rate, I'm going to get um, an 8.6 increase in DPS, right? Which is much higher than if I increased, for example, raw attack, abysmal, or partial attack percentage. So if I increase attack percentage, I'll only get 5.94, okay? If I increase crit damage, I will only get 2.14, which is even worse. So I'm, I know, you know, crit damage is not the way to go for me right now. At least at this point. This could change depending on what character and what distribution, you know, just as how I mentioned earlier. If you had really low attack and really high crit, then you would want to pump attack. But if you had really high attack, high crit rate, but low damage, crit damage, you want to pump crit damage. And so in this case, um, it also looks like these two are actually pretty high, partial damage percent and partial crit percent. So if I could find a way to keep increasing that physical damage percent or somehow give me more damage bonuses off the bat, that's going to be pretty big as well as increasing that crit rate. And the other thing is resistance, right? So resistance is really hard. You can't, it's not a substat or anything, you know, it's hard to really find. But if you look at the partial for resistance, that's a t that's 14. Think about that. Okay, that's 14. That's almost two times as much as increasing my crit rate would do. So if I can find a way to reduce my opponent's, say, physical resistance or some kind of elemental resistance, that's going to be huge for me right now. 14. That's it's going to be it's going to increase my damage by a ton. Um, by how much? Well, you can just input values here and you can see the increase. But the point is not to say what is the actual damage numbers, but to see how much increase, how much value am I getting from that resistance decrease. And right now it's giving me for every point, for every percent in that resistance decrease, it's giving me 14, which is a ton compared to the rest of these stats. So if, because of how rare resistance decreases is, that's, it's huge. If you, so for example, one of the ways to decrease resistance is to apply superconduct, physical resistance, right? So if I just made, uh, if I reduce resistance by 40% because of superconduct, for example, just look at how much increase that gave me, right? From an average of 1.2 to 1.8, that, that is a ton. So, um, and if if you wanted to play around in these numbers here, you could easily see increasing that crit rate is going to be better than increasing the attack percentage. And so, in summary, that's what I wanted to share. Um, there, there wasn't, I did, for, for what I could see, there wasn't much of this content going on. And I'm just going to show you guys again um, the formula so you guys can take it down. So uh, if you want to use it in your, you know, in, in, in your analysis, you should take and put in your own numbers into each of these, you know, percentage and attack and crit values. So, so again, these are, these are the partials. Uh, I could make it a little smaller maybe so they could all fit on the screen, maybe not. Um, yeah, like that. So these are all the part, th th so this is the main formula. And then these are all the partials. So you can take a screenshot of each of the partials uh, and there you go. So I hope this is you know interesting to you and I hope this is helpful for you. Um, this is really a rigorous way to think about how your you know attack, crit, damage, resistance really comes together in you know creating value in your final damage formula. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, if you guys have any ideas of what uh, you want to see in future guides, let me know. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye-bye.